it's Michelle Moran from Cancer Treatment Options and Management, and I'm here to talk with you a little bit about PET CT. Uh, we just ran a quiz uh, for our newsletter list uh, just to find out what they understood about uh, what was the best scan for cancer and why. And uh, I wanted to address a couple of the common questions or concerns that come up. Um, so a lot of times what I hear when we start talking about PET-CT, positron emission tomography, CT, or a lot of times we'll, we'll get on a consultation with someone and we'll say, okay, have you had a PET-CT? And they'll say, yes, I've had three and we're blown away. And then when we ask a little bit more uh, we find out, no, it wasn't a PET CT, it was a CT. Um, and there's a big difference between the two. Uh, or um, they'll say, yeah, I saw your video about PET CT and I asked my doctor about it and they said, I don't need one. Um, they said, I've already had a CT and that was sufficient. Uh, or they said, it won't change anything anyway. Uh, so there's no point. Um, and they told me not to bother. So I wanted to talk with you just a little bit about why you might hear that and what to do about it. The facts are a PET CT is the only imaging test that can tell you definitively in the examination if you do or don't have cancer. CT can only show you whether there's a shape or a shadow somewhere, MRI, same thing, but the MRI image is a bit clearer, and that's why surgeons often like an MRI prior to surgery. They can see uh, very clearly where things are, whereas CT and PET-CT are a little bit fuzzy. But a PET-CT, the nature of the test is that it makes the cancer cells expose themselves. They literally glow in the scan. And that not only tells us where cancer is in your body, it also tells us how aggressive your tumors are. Um, and that's important information as well in terms of what to target for surgery or radiation um, and other important treatment information. There's different types of PET CT scans depending on the type of cancer you have. There's lots I could share. I'm not going to do that right now. But what I really wanted to talk about today uh, are these kind of two main comments that people might hear from a doctor, which is that CT scans are just as good. Um, so when someone comes to us, we will always ask if you had a PET CT. Uh, and then depending on their cancer and their staging and a few other factors, we will probably encourage you to get a PET CT and we'll certainly help you coordinate one if you need a hand. In Canada, we have about 35 PET CT scanning machines for the entire country, and they're predominantly used for heart disease and other things like that, not so much for cancer. In the U.S., by contrast, there's almost 4,000 PET CT scanning machines, and it has been the standard of care for a diagnostic in the U.S. for many years. Um, why it's not so much in Canada essentially really comes down to cost. It's got nothing to do with any data that suggests a CT scan is comparable. In fact, CT scans statistically uh, are accurate to about 60% uh, with repeated scans, meaning you have one now and then you have one in three months or so. And the comparison of the two and whether the masses, the shapes or shadows are getting bigger or smaller in response to whatever is being done to the patient is how the doctor identifies whether treatment is working. Um, we are precision cancer medicine specialists. Um, we like more accuracy uh, and we like it faster. So we don't want you to have to do two scans over three to six months to find out to 60% likelihood whether anything's happening. Um, we want you to know within 48 hours to 90 plus percent accuracy whether something's happening and that's what you need a PET CT for. The other statistic, uh, doctor might say, I've already, you're already on the best treatment for your cancer. Um, there's no need to have a PET CT scan, even if it is a better scan than CT or might show us a little bit more clearly what is and isn't cancer. Um, it's not going to change the way I'm treating you, your doctor might say. Well, statistically, in over four out of 10 cases, these are Canadian statistics. Um, so our own cancer agencies. Um, over four out of 10 cases, uh, PET-CT scans significantly impact treatment plans for cancer patients. Uh, there was even one BC Cancer Agency study, um, gosh, I first saw that maybe 13 years ago, um, that showed that over 80% of the time when patients were given a PET-CT scan, it changed their treatment plan. I think I've said enough. CT scans 
are better than nothing, but they cannot definitively determine what is and isn't cancer. Lots get missed. There's lots of folks who are even being treated for cancer that they don't even have based on a CT scan. And certainly way too many times we hear people being told based on a CT scan, they're cancer free when in fact they aren't. And then by the time they find out that they're not, they have metastasis. And sometimes sadly it's too late for cancer treatment to be very effective. We don't want you in either of those categories. We want you to know for a fact that you do or don't have cancer. And then we want you to start making sure that you're getting the proper genetic testing and making sure that you're on the right treatment. With cancer, hitting it fast with the very best treatment is just the way to make sure that you have the, the minimal number of treatments and the maximum benefit. And for us, and of course, for you, we're looking for complete remission wherever possible. Um, we'll settle for a second best um, if we have to, uh, which is that we're um, preventing progression of your cancer. We're keeping it at bay and we're keeping a close eye on it and making sure you're always on the best possible treatment. That's what precision cancer medicine can do. So anyway, hope you feel a little bit better educated about PET-CT about how to overcome those two common objections that your doctor might offer. Um, there's lots of information going to be associated with this video. There'll be a, a link below for um, downloadable uh, PDFs about PET-CT, lots of statistics. Remember, everything that you bring to your doctor needs to have good science-based medicine behind it. You can't blame your doctor for not being willing to look at something um, when you're not presenting facts or data from a highly reputable source. Their medical license is on the line. They need to make sure that what they're recommending is both beneficial and necessary. And so your job as a cancer patient is to make sure you are well-armed, well-educated, and prepared for some of the most common concerns that a doctor might have and some of the most common objections they might have to some very reasonable requests like PET-CT or genetic testing. I hope you found this helpful. Please make a comment. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or if there's some suggestions you'd have about how I can make this information just easier to digest. I welcome them. Have a good day.